Ladies and gents, welcome back. All things covered with yours truly, Pat P. Brian McFadden back at you with another jam-packed show. Listen, if you're liking what we're doing, please subscribe, drop your thoughts in the comment section on YouTube. Drop us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And like I said, if you like us, tell a friend to tell a friend. Let them know what we're doing here on All Things Covered because we're covering everything. Pat P. Man, this might yo, be our yo. very first Steelers check-in since yeah. your arrival in the Steel City. Big news coming from Pittsburgh. Of course, the draft is basically a week away. But the Steelers, they've been making news throughout this free agency period. Most recently, they made a trade. They went out and mm. got an experienced, savvy vet of a wide receiver and uh, in Allen Robertson. Hearing that news and have you played against Allen quite a few times, yeah. Pat P. Ten ball games, yeah. to say the least, between you two guys. He has 33 receptions for 333 yards and three touchdowns. I'm sorry. No, you haven't played against him <laughs> ten times, but you faced off. Those were his, right. his numbers from a year ago. He Last played in year. ten ball games, three touchdowns, 339 yards. That was some injuries. Uh, but what what are your thoughts in here? Allen Robinson will be a new teammate of yours in Pittsburgh. Man, it's crazy how the world works. I just came back from the NFL uh, media workshop, right? Yep. He was and there? No doubt about it. He was there. We were just, you know, chopping it up, talking about ball, and now we're teammates. <laughs> you know, so it's just crazy how, uh, you know, the world works in, 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 in a sense. So, um, like you said, get have an opportunity to get an experienced receiver. Didn't have the numbers that we was used to seeing him, you know, have when he was out in Chicago. Uh, a couple of years ago. So um, we expect a lot of a lot, uh, big things out of him. You know, we know he's a big play potential player. Um, now we just have to find a, find a way to get that out of him. So I thought the trade um, was big for us. Um, we're looking for a huge return. And that's obviously getting into the playoffs and see what happens after that. You know what? Initially, I was like, OK, I got to hear the ins and outs of this trade. But hearing that the Steelers and the Rams basically seventh swapped round. seventh round picks seventh round a seventh round selection and the rams are eating more than half of his salary right I mean, so that's a win that's a win for the pittsburgh Big Steelers. Win. you know especially you get a guy who will be extremely motivated to say the least mm -hmm. because of what did not happen a year ago they experienced an experienced wide receiver for your young quarterback another weapon especially in the red zone so i, I i'm like hey if the rams willing to eat more than half his salary you're only swapping Seventh round seven picks, round and you picks. know how hard it is for most seven rounders to make a team. You know, hey, man, I'm not <laughs> expecting to see the the peak Allen Robinson, but clearly a guy that can be a contributor. I think it would be huge. What was it like, you know, when you faced him in years past? Uh, you know, he's a, a big body receiver. You know, has very, very uh, deceptive speed. You know, he don't look like he's moving real fast, but he has like those long strides. He's a I won't necessarily say it's a gallop, but he's like a strider as a runner. Very, very strong hands, uh, run really clean routes. You know, so I think having him, you know, in that in that receiver room just made us a whole lot better. You know, so I agree. I can't I can't wait to see what the connection is going to be with him and, you know, the other guys in the receiver room and also with Kenny Pickett. You know, like you said, Ben having a, a bigger receiver down in the red zone, two big receivers down in the red zone. Now mm -hmm. you have to pretty much pick your poison. And don't forget about old Pat Fryermuth, outstanding yeah. tight end. I think he's going to have yep. a breakout caliber Go year Pat. as well. So uh, I'm liking what the Steelers are doing, you know, so far. And, and Pat, real quick, I got a chance to create my very first mock draft. Okay. The first round. So it's called BMAC Mock 1.0 because it's the first. So the first is the one of one. First of many. And I will. Yes, I'm <laughs> releasing this on CBSSports.com Monday. Make sure you tune in. I can't reveal to you who I have the Steelers selecting and my okay. mock, but you just gotta wait and see and let me know your thoughts. And the same, I think I think it has to get. I, I think it's probably safe to say it's probably going to be an offensive lineman, but I won't be surprised if he picked the cornerback. You gotta wait and see. I can't give you. I can't. That's I can't why. I, that's why I said I, I'm gonna wait and see, but I won't be surprised. It's one of those two positions. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, won't be. <laughs> you know, and speaking of cornerback play, your thoughts on the current secondary? Because after bringing you aboard, you know, Omar went out and got, you know, Keanu Neal from a first rounder pick, from a first rounder of the Atlanta Falcons. 
Um, you know, former pro bowler as well. You look at what you already have in place yourself, Mika Fitzpatrick, Demonte Casey, Witherspoon, Levi Wallace, um, Arthur Millette, nickel guy, man, you got some names down in that secondary that has a lot of experience. And if you guys put it yeah. together, man, can, can potentially be a special group, man. What are your thoughts on the current secondary as we see it right now? Well, I think we're, um, we're, we're, we're in a pretty good position as far as, like you just said, a lot of guys with uh, a ton of experience. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of those names that you name are, are guys that's interchangeable, you know, can kind of be lined up all over the field, you know, so mm-hmm. you got a bunch of wild cards in the room as well, which is, it makes us that much more dangerous because you never know where that somebody is going to be, you know, so having an opportunity to, uh, to, 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 to work with these guys is going to be a blast because, you know, I'm going to be asked to do some things that I've never done in my career before, you know, which is like, like, you what just might little- you be asked to do <laughs> that you've never done before besides play cornerback? Yeah. Just be literally lined up all over the field. So, you know, Are you I saying potentially maybe at safety, maybe at nickel, maybe at dime? You know what are you what are hey, you thinking? What are, all over the field, Mac. I'm, I'm I'm I was told that you know they're looking forward to using you know not all of my you know just not my experience, but all the tangibles that I bring to the game, as far as mm-hmm. the the knowledge of knowing offenses or you know just having me explore my athletic abilities a little bit more here now in the latter part of my career, which is something I always wanted to do anyway. But like I told Coach T, you know, when you always been that guy, you know, and a team have have a guy, they want their guy on that guy. Still, so I wasn't never yeah. called to do anything else. But, Mac, you know me. I love the game. I know the game, you know every position. So that's something that won't be hard for me, but it's going to be foreign because I never did it before. So I'm uh, actually looking forward to it. And I can't wait to see uh, what the outcome is going to be. And, and hopefully uh, the ball can end up in my hands a little bit more. Well, well, maybe we can, you know, call you a little baby Rod Woodson, because remember, he made that transition <laughs> from a predominantly lockdown follow opposing teams, best wide receiver yep. to a guy who was all over the football field. And man, found a new life. I think right. the Steelers will definitely <laughs> welcome that. You know what I mean? So, hey, let's wait and see. Yep. Now it's time to transition to around the league. Yes, it's the offseason, but. The offseason is like the end season for the NFL. There's always noteworthy <laughs> news breaking. Most recently, the Philadelphia Eagles, I know our producer, Eric Debo, as we like to call him, he is still smiling from ear to ear because <laughs> his favorite quarterback, oh, I'm sorry, his second Baby. favorite quarterback because his first okay. is Carson Wentz still. I have to say, yeah, Carson, it, Carson it's still, is It's guy. still Carson Wentz. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, they, if someone asked Debo this right now, <laughs> would he take Carson Wentz right now for Philly? He probably would say yeah because that's how nah, much he love just, he, he had. just put it in. I don't think he would. I think nah. he loves him, but I don't think he would take Carson. Right he now. loves Carson Wentz just as much as he loves Ben Simmons. <laughs> oh, but that's another yeah, topic that's another, of discussion. Yeah, that's another. Hey, hey, that man got sent home. No question. But the Eagles rewarded Jalen Hurts with the richest NFL contract ever. He's currently making fifty-one million per year, uh, almost one hundred and eighty million in guaranteed money you know thoughts on Jalen's journey Pat P you know going back to college becoming the man in Alabama losing his job didn't transfer initially then made the move to Oklahoma drafted in the second round many people felt like he would probably be a backup throughout his career got a chance to start because Debo's quarterback Carson Wentz didn't do the job and I look at him you know tell us about you know seeing his process just unfold before your eyes Man, it's just been an amazing process to watch because I'll never forget watching that game when he got benched. And, you know, like, I, did he transfer after that season or he stayed? No, he didn't. Tra- he yet. stayed one more year. Okay. That's when what Tua was. was a full time starter. Yep. And he remember, he came in the SEC championship game and kind of bailed the team right. out, led exactly. him to victory, and he transferred the following year. Yep. And when I when I watched that, when he got benched in the, uh, the championship game, and he didn't, you know, end up leaving, but end up leaving a year after that and going over to Oklahoma. I was like, man, this kid's different. Just just seeing the way he was talking in interviews in college as an 18, 19 year old, how just serious his demeanor was, how how such a team player he was. And just to see him carry over what he started in Alabama and going over to Oklahoma and doing that, it was like, yeah, this this guy's a gamer. You know, he just, you know, if he, you know, when he gets to the lead and he gets in the right system, he's going to be dangerous. 
you know, because he has all the intangibles. See, he's not only one of those African-American quarterbacks that's labeled as a runner. You know, he can run. He uses legs very smart, but he can throw the ball. Like, he mm-hmm. can make, you know, all the throws that is required to make as a quarterback. And just to see his progression, you know, from year one to year two, and then when they made the playoffs last year, you can now he had a taste of success and coming into last year and doing what he did last year was just remarkable. And mm-hmm. Philly, you know, they felt that they they feel that they found their guy, you know, because I remember I, I remember what that uh you had a comment. You were talking about uh Bryce Young, you were talking about the difference between the NFL and the NBA as far as you know the draft. The, the, yeah, the draft. The NFL looks for, you know. What ha- I forgot how you worded it is how, what have you done for me? Like what, the NFL what, basically look for what you've done, right? Along with and what they believe you will do. Exactly. So, and I believe that's what that contract by him getting rewarded with that contract, seeing the progression of what he's done mm-hmm. and what he did last year. It was like, yeah. yeah, this is our guy. So let's reward yeah. our third rounder that we didn't think that would do this second rounder. He was a second rounder. second, second rounder yep. that we didn't think would, would, you know, carry us, you know, like this, let's go ahead and reward him in the right way. So his journey has been phenomenal. I watched it, had the opportunity to watch him from Alabama to Oklahoma. And, and, and every year that he was in the league, had the opportunity to play against him twice, you know, so uh, I'm a big fan of Jalen, man. So huge, huge kudos and hats off to him and his team uh, for, for getting that deal done. Yeah. And, and hats off to Jalen, Hurts as well because he has a female agent. Yeah, he has a female uh, team. Man. I heard. Yeah, every, every, his whole, I think his entire team, team is all female, all yeah. females. You know yep. what I mean? So shout, shout out to the females to too, man. No question. Uh, what's, no what, question. what's the age? What, you know her name? Her name is Nicole Lynn. We got to try to get on the yeah, show. Yeah, man. Because, shout out to Nicole Lynn, man. You know, being a part of a male dominant, you know, profession and yeah, doing what she's it. been able to do. We uh, definitely that's get on. Because yeah, my wife even asked me. My wife said, what made her want to be an agent? Yeah. I said, that's a good question. <laughs> that's, that's a great question. That's a great. She got quite a few big name clients, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I five, think she has Quentin Williams also. Name. Yes, she does. She does. And he's up for a big contract as well. So Nicole is yeah. winning, man. Shouts out to Nicole, man. If you're listening to us, if you're watching us on YouTube. And she has Miles Garrett as well with mm. Clutch Sports. That's who yeah, she's with. So, yep. Yeah, we got to try to get on the show. Now with Jalen Hurts signing his massive deal, mm-hmm. next up, you would think it would be Lamar Jackson, but Lamar is like sitting in traffic on the interstate, driving in the slow lane when everybody else is by, riding past him. That's how Lamar is. Lamar's man yeah. is driving in slow lane, man. He's not even driving. He's actually riding with nah. his, you know, you know, your uncle, or your aunts are the ones who usually drive slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and ain't everybody else just passing him. <laughs> so, so you would think Lamar Jackson would be up next, but heck, he's been waiting for such a long time. The new t- the, the top two guys now they should be will be Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert. So you know how it is. It's about the time in the deal. Justin Herbert's deal probably will be the exact same or a few more dollars more than Hurts. If Herbert no, was to sign gonna be more. first. Yeah. It's gonna be and more. then whoever the last person to sign <laughs> is going to have the highest. Be the highest. Oh, yeah. So, you know how I go, Matt. You know how they you always <laughs> had this discussion. Who's deserving of more? I mean, heck, it really doesn't matter. It's about the timing. It's all, yeah, it's all about timing, man. Who, 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 who is going to be willing to reset the market? Yeah. Who's going to so be, Jaylen who's gonna be the like, rabbit to jump out there? Jalen Hurts was the rabbit. There you go. Yep. He's the rabbit. Now, <laughs> Herbert and Burrow they're chasing yep. Justin. I mean, Jalen Hurts. So yep. whichever the two, whichever the one of the two signs next, his deal will be a little higher than Hurts. And then whoever mm-hmm. the final guy is, his deal will be a little higher than the second guy. And that's, and that's just so, how it's been. And it's so crazy too, Matt, because a lot of people don't obviously know about contract situation. But it's funny how, because at the end of the day, when that contract, they might be making the same amount of money, but in that first year, they may want that new money to look like it's uh three hundred thousand more, just so they can say I'm the highest paid. Yes, it's a pride thing. Is. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it's, a, it's a pride. A lot of people don't know that's a pride thing. Like I want to say I got the highest. It's only going right. to last for maybe a few months, and right? Because you you only got the highest because they added an extra hundred thousand or extra exactly. two hundred thousand, and depending on where you where you play at taxes, you might not be the highest, depending on what right. state you in. Hmm. So that's like, the thing yeah, you factor in Justin Herbert. If Justin <laughs> Herbert signs 
the same deal or a bigger deal than Jalen Hurts, he's going to get less money because he's in California. Mm-hmm. That's that that's tough. People don't realize yeah. that. So, you know, you have to factor all of that into the equation. But in, in regards to the next up, man, whoever the next up guy is, he will have the highest. And whoever whoever comes last gets the highest. And then we just wait on Lamar Jackson. That's hey, so I, I got a question for you, Matt. Would you been playing in that division, you know, um, in your early part of your career? How do you feel the Ravens are handling the Lamar situation? Man, it's it, 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 horrible. Mm-hmm. because he should have been paid. But then also, too, you know, the organization is going to do what they think is best. You know how mm-hmm. it is. You've been a part of many negotiating opportunities. They're always going to do what they think is best. But mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson ha- plays a position that holds a lot of leverage, more so than any other position in the game of football. Right. So if I'm Lamar, a year ago, around this time, I let the organization know, if y'all don't want to give me what I want, Trade me now because I'm not coming to camp. Exactly. That's what I said. I would have did that last year before they had a tag where I, mm-hmm. I'm kind of forced in a position. Last year, you were in your fifth year. Number one, that was the disrespect already was being shown because they allowed you to get to your fifth yeah, year. Fifth year. Right. Jalen Hurts got paid with one more year on his rookie deal. Right. Just most, most teams most teams do that. <laughs> yes, most teams do that with any position. Better yet, right. the quarterback. You know, when they feel like you're their guy, they don't really wait. So when you talk about quarterbacks nowadays, quarterbacks don't get to their final year of their rookie deal if they showcase that they can be the guy. Heck, your former teammate, Kyler Murray, he got paid well before his final year of his rookie deal. That is third year, I believe. Yeah, so so if you're like Lamar Jackson, you saw the disrespect a year ago. Why even? No, I got to make I got to make a stance for myself. If y'all don't want to trade me, because last year he had more leverage. No doubt he about it. has because so, when he played, that's when he lost the leverage. Yes, because now you play. Guess what they're gonna do? If we can't come to terms now, we're gonna hit you with a tag. Mm-hmm. So now we're gonna force teams to do the bare minimum, which is two first rounders. We're gonna force them to have that decision to make. Right, because the proof is in the pudding. When he's on the field, they're winners. When he's not, they're just an average football team. All right, at best. So, but we have to wait and see. Hopefully, he gets paid. But I, I I think he plays so elsewhere. And do and you feel so? Do you feel he plays under 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 the tag this year? Then either he plays under, under the I tag. I don't think a deal gets done. I don't think a either deal he gets pl- done. either he plays under the tag, or he lowers his demands. I don't see the team budget yeah. any more than think, what they've already budged. I don't think he lowered his de- demands. I think I think what what he's going to do is I think he's going to try to sit it out as long as he can. Show up to camp, get his thirty-two million, ball out. Hopefully, no, 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 no. I don't know. He can't. If I show up to camp, because he I'm can't not, sit out. He can't sit out now because they're not going to give him a new contract now. Well, he can. He can. He can, he can. He can wait until like the sixth or seventh week and still get his full salary. But what I'm saying is, they're still they're still going to tack on fines for him not playing and him not. They're going to swipe. You know camp. they'll wipe those fines out whenever he report. You know that. Hey, every every organization different. Man, well, if he <laughs> if he play, and let's say he plays and get hurt again, I know, but I feel like he all of his leverage is gone, man. He can't sit not, out no more. I'm not he showing can't. up. I can't. If you're Lamar Jackson, I understand 32 million is a lot of money, no question. But if you go mm-hmm. and play for 32 million when Daniel Jones getting 40, you know, what did he play for last year? What, what did he play for last year? Oh, uh, I can't remember. It's like maybe 12 million or something like that. He I went out there and played for 12 million dollars last year, which was year. wrong. Now you get, Exactly. That's what I'm saying. He should have sat out last year versus this year. So it's too late to sit out now. It's Tell too late because well. they're not going to pay you. I, I agree. I agree, Pat. <laughs> I, I said, just said he should have so, did this last year. So I, I, I'm not going to sit out and get hit with all these fines. They're already showing me they well, ain't going to pay I, You know what I do? So they show I me report they ain't to wipe camp. The fines. I report to camp and the first time I scramble, I get hit. I'm hurt. There you go. He showed I, up. I, I, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> he I'm, showed I'm up. sorry. Let's see how many games you won without me. Right. <laughs> but hey, Pat P, can I throw something in the air? It was 23 million, Matt, last year. That, oh, throw shoot. something in. What if San Francisco trade for Lamar and they that'd send so Trey lovely. Lance along that'd with some be, other I, package? Hey, that'd be so ideal. I was thinking of that the other day. 
I ain't gonna lie to you, Mac, because I just saw San Fran, a, a, a couple teams reached out to him. I was like, I want to know if Baltimore is one of those teams because I believe that would be a nice even trade. I, I, I don't know nothing about San Francisco uh, salary cap, but he will be perfect in a Kyle Shanahan's offense. I tweeted that out March 28th. I said, what if Baltimore trades for Lamar Jackson? And for that to be a realistic option, you got to send Trey Lance. You have you to. Gotta send Trey, La- Tra- Trey Lance. Heck, I might even send Bosa. Hmm. Nah. They ain't sending Bosa. I said, they, I, they, said they, I might. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might. I might consider because you're gonna have to pay Bosa. No, nah, yeah, you're gonna have to pay Bosa. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do that because they thrive off their front four. They I'll put, say they Trey gonna, Lance, because see the thing about front San Fran, they don't have no first rounders this year or a second rounder. So you gotta mm. you're gonna have to give a, a future first rounder. So I give them Trey Lance. Honestly, I think I think they'll take an even trade. No, not for no MVP. No, 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 not Baltimore. Because Baltimore already yeah, they got a tag right. on them. They got to get two first yeah, rounders right. anyway. Yeah, exactly. You got to get two first rounders. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you're right. But hey, so they gotta, I, San Fran can't San Fran can't happen then. I mean, yeah. It don't, it don't have to be two first rounders this year, though. No, it could be one this year. Well, they ain't got one this year. They so ain't got one this year. They ain't got a second round. But, I mean, I tweeted it out at March 28th. I said, what if San Francisco, maybe I know something. I thought that would be dope, man. I, I think that would be a very, very interesting combination with that running game that he already had. And- Debo, Ooh, Christian Debo, McCaffrey, George Kittle. Chris- Man, and Lamar Jackson, offensive and Kyle line, Shanahan that, that calling protects. the plays. Yes, you talking about some eye eye candy, man. Man, we're gonna see. We gonna, but see. I don't think he. I don't think he goes nowhere this year. I think he's gonna be with the Baltimore Ravens. We're gonna and see. He will be under center this season because it's too late to sit out, man. You all, you have no more leverage to sit out. I know, I know. I, 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 like I said. <laughs> I would have said that last year. I would have yeah, made, yeah. Would, the time to do it was last year for sure, hundred percent. Because I don't know what their record was when they uh, when he went out. Like what their record is when Lamar is not on the field, but I know it's not good. So it ain't. exactly. So I would have went in. All right, man. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the the stats, the proof of the pudding. I'm the guy. Like people know the ball. They come see the Baltimore Ravens to see eight. Ain't no if and buts about it. So if I'm not on the field, we ain't winning. They need me. And let me show them that by putting my foot in the ground right now saying, boom, you don't want to pay me? I'm going to sit out this year so y'all can see if y'all really trying to win. I'm going to sit out and show y'all how important I am to this organization. And then we'll go from there. But if that's Baltimore plans, not, you know, paying Lamar, you know, X amount of dollars, because I'm sure they they know what they want to pay him. Mm-hmm. And they're willing to move on. That's that that surely may be the case next year, but they're tagging him. They know teams don't want to trade two first round of picks. I mean, yeah, two first round picks. So, the, like I said, the leverage is in their in their court. They got so he's not. Yeah, he's not getting no contract this year. Well, hey, I, I, if I'm not disagreeing with you, he played this all <laughs> the way wrong. He should have sat out next year, and I mean last year shouldn't have came and to camp. Should have forced a trade, asked for a trade. Mm-hmm. You saw what happened with Russell Wilson. Russell said, I want yep. to get out of there. And he, he got, got out, out of there. <laughs> Tariq they Hill said nice he wanted answer. to get out of there. Tariq, Tariq, out Tariq out Hill. Devontae Adams said there. he wanted to get out of there. Out of there. Out of Jaylen there. And none of those guys had a tag on them. <laughs> it's easier Francis. to be moved when you don't out have that there. tag. So we got to wait and see. But Pat P, man, it's always a pleasure catching up with you. We know we see you yes, moving sir. around a little bit, enjoying your off season. <laughs> Workouts have always, started. Coach. But I know you're getting your workout in. I know you're on the golf course, too. Oh, yeah, man. I'm on the golf course. I'm going to be back with the boys soon, man. Mike T gave me his blessings to go and have this nice, beautiful trip with my wife. But I be I will be back with my guys here in uh, a couple of days. There you have it. There you have it. Still <laughs> nation. No worry. Season right around the corner. But before we do that, guess what? The draft will be coming up. And we will tap into that draft in regards to what you believe your favorite team will select. And if you're a fan of the, of the Pittsburgh Steelers, See exactly what you guys will, what we all will be a part of moving forward. And don't forget, BMAC's first draft, mock, BMAC mock 1.0 will be dropping Monday. Stay tuned. Hey, Matt, before, yes, sir. before I let him go, I, I got to say this 
I know I talked about this early on in the show, but the NFL uh, media workshop was yep. amazing, bro. Had I know you had an opportunity to attend it a couple years ago, but I had an opportunity. I had an opportunity to experience some things that I never thought goes on behind the camera. So it definitely helped helped me sharpen my skills, mm-hmm. and I can't look forward to see what it's going to bring to me uh, in my afterlife of football. So, so you so, making it known right now when you are done playing, you trying to you trying to. You trying to put on the headset, have a microphone in the yeah, front of you. I'm you trying, trying to get into I'm, I'm trying to put that suit and tie on, coach. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're a business, man. <laughs> business suit yes, with a sir. business plan. <laughs> yes, sir. You know it. Yes, hey, sir, man. Well, but there that you was have a, it. a great opportunity. There you have it. Well, hey, as you dominated the football field, I'm pretty sure you're going to dominate the broadcasting as well. Oh, yeah, man. You know, I'm going to work my tail off now. I'm got to. Up, got to. <laughs> I got to. Well, thank you once again for listening and watching us here. All things covered. Pat Peterson, Brian McFadden. Like I always tell you guys, see you when we see you. Peace. Peace.